Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure at Man United has been anything but boring. Though frequently touted as a frontrunner in the sack race, the Norwegian guided the Red Devils to a Champions League spot last year and, despite a humiliating exit from the Champions League and a laughable 6-1 early season defeat to Tottenham this year, United have recovered to propel themselves into an unlikely title race. That's especially impressive given their competition, with Liverpool, Man City and Chelsea boasting much deeper and more rounded squads than Solskjaer has at his disposal, and with every major club suffering disappointing results, long-term injuries and Covid absences in one of the most unpredictable campaigns in years, United have an opportunity to capitalise in the winter window. After the stifling dullness of the Mourinho and LVG eras, it's encouraging that United's improvement has been based on their attack. A costly gamble on Bruno Fernandes a year ago paid off in spectacular style, with the Portuguese now among the division's best players and Solskjaer's team has been remoulded in the image of its star. But what do they have left to add? We're going to take a look at the side to find out. Though Edinson Cavani has been excellent for the Red Devils in limited minutes this campaign, the team's attacking lineup is otherwise composed of fast, tricky players who are more comfortable out wide than through the middle and with Bruno picking passes, they're great at moving upfield quickly to create chances. Under Solskjaer, United are one of the Prem's most direct sides, with around 40 passes per shot, ranking fourth in the league, and only Leeds, West Ham United and Villa get shots off faster. This is a good way to maximise a pacey front line and a number 10 who is seemingly physically incapable of playing it safe. United play more through balls than any team in the top flight, with nearly two a match, and that means they get plenty of clear goal-scoring opportunities and big chances, with only Everton, Tottenham and Liverpool boasting superior shot quality on average. It also means that the team is capable of scoring its way out of trouble even when down a goal or two, winning 18 points from losing positions this season, eight more than second-best Liverpool. But there is a downside to this attacking style. Trying to create big chances quickly often means losing the ball a lot, and only Southampton and Leeds, the Prem's two most aggressive transition teams, play more inaccurate short passes per game than United's 64. That means they can easily lose control, and even in wins over Aston Villa and Leeds, United's defence was often in trouble, the opposition frequently meeting little resistance as they move through the centre of the park. Having the ability to shut up shop or slow the game down is an important weapon in a title contender's armoury especially heading into the latter stages of a long, fixture-congested season like the current one. And Solskjaer has tried to calm things down. Over the last season and a half, his most common pairing in central midfield has been McTominay and Fred, who are both relatively conservative defence-first players, and it has had a positive effect, with United allowing 0.9 non-penalty goals per 90 when that pairing has started, compared with 1.4 with a different midfield lineup. This campaign, Fred in particular, has had a positive impact on the club's results. When he's on the field, United's expected goal difference per 90 is around 0.7 better than it is without him. Better than the upswing of 0.6 they get when Bruno plays or the 0.4 they get when Rashford is on the pitch. And while no one would claim that means Fred is more important than those stars, it does suggest that a solid, responsible presence in the middle could pay dividends for United especially if that person can combine Fred's work rate and positional sense with a more expansive passing range and better ball-carrying ability. So who should they target to level up? To find the best candidate for the United engine room, we need to see what Fred does well and where he can be improved upon, and outstanding in the stats is the Brazilian's defensive output. Among the United squad, only Aaron wan bissaka makes more tackles and interceptions per appearance than Fred's 4.7. And when he isn't snapping into challenges or cutting off passing lanes, the former Shakhtar man also leads the team in pressing, closing down opponents 24 times a game. For context, that's the seventh most in the Premier League, better than Conte or anyone at high-pressing teams like Liverpool or Leeds. On the other hand, his passing could be better. Most dominant teams need more than one player who can move the ball into the final third regularly, with Thiago, Toni Kroos, Jordan Henderson and Marco Verratti topping this metric across Europe's top five leagues. And while Bruno is among England's best in this regard, it requires the Portuguese to drop deep and cover more ground, overtaxing Solskjaer's key player and moving him further away from the penalty area where he can do maximum damage. Fred passes the ball into the final third 5.5 times per 90, respectable but less than midfielders like Hoiberg and Yuri Tielemans, and finding someone who can improve on this mark will allow United to pin inferior teams back, decreasing the pressure on their own back line, which has committed 4.6 fouls a game this season compared to 3.9 for Chelsea and 3.1 for Liverpool. 
That might explain the club's previous interest in Lille midfielder Boubakari Soumare, who averages an incredible nine passes into the final third per match. That puts him among the very best in Europe at the age of 21, but that lack of experience, coupled with just 12 pressures a game and middling defensive output across his short career, suggests that he could use another season or two at a lower level before involvement in a Premier League title challenge. Fortunately, we have the perfect player for right now. For us, the premium choice in United's DM spot would be Juventus midfielder Rodrigo Bentancur, and while you may think the odds are against it, United could have reason for hope. Bentancur has been a regular starter this season, with the sixth most minutes at Juve, but the side does have a solid roster, with Rabiot, Ramsey, McKennie and Artur all available in the middle. And intriguingly, United have an ace up their sleeve in the form of Paul Pogba. Long linked with a switch back to Italy, the Frenchman will have a year left on his deal this summer and could be allowed to return to Turin in some sort of swap deal for Bentancur, a move which would massively help the balance of the squad and turn an underperforming high earner into a guaranteed starter overnight. Though now in his fourth campaign with Juventus, Bentancur is just 23, younger than another rumoured United target, Wilfred Ndidi, and has demonstrated elite ball-winning ability since day one. Since arriving at the club in 2017, he's averaged around 4.5 tackles and interceptions a game, and a whopping 23 pressures per 90, despite Juve's reputation for defensive deep block football. And while he commits plenty of fouls, close to two a game, he knows what he can and can't get away with, only receiving a yellow card roughly every three games in Italy. That meets our basic requirement for protecting the defence, but as you'd expect from a starter on a European powerhouse, Benton Kerr is much more than a destroyer. Reasonably press resistant, he matches Fred's rate of 1.2 completed dribbles a match and loses possession less often than the Brazilian, around 0.7 times a game over the last three seasons compared to Fred's 1.2. And when he has space to pick a pass, Benton Kerr truly comes into his own. Among central midfielders in Europe's top five leagues this season, the Uruguayan is 15th for passes into the final third with seven a game, and there's evidence in his pass that he can even do a job further up the pitch, managing 1.8 chances created per 90 last campaign, which would play second in the United squad after Bruno. As a consequence, Benton Kerr's presence has a huge impact in both attack and defence. In fact, over the last two years, the midfielder has a larger positive effect on Juve's expected goal difference per game than Cristiano Ronaldo does. When the Portuguese plays, the team's XG difference per 90 is 0.22 better than when he's missing, while with Benton Kerr, the team is 0.36 XG better off every match. This impressive profile, coupled with his age and experience at the top level, means that Benton Kerr is the ideal signing to push United from the fringes of the title race to the front of it while giving them the opportunity to extract maximum value from Paul Pogba, whose indifferent performances and contract situation have seen his stock plummet. As Bruno Fernandes has shown, the right signing at the right time can transform a club's fortunes. Benton Kerr could be the path to a first title since the departure of Alex Ferguson. So that was our take on the signing that could bring Man United the title in January, but what do you think? Do you have an alternative target? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.